these art pieces are super multi-purpose. You can display them, you can use them as a fan, uh, you can uh, practice karate chopping with it. <laughs> I'm joking. I made a lot of art pieces um, when I was a teenager, so I figured might as well, um, you know, since I'm back home, whip out all of my uh, my multitudes of art pieces and show them to the camera and take a trip down memory lane. It might be useful for whoever's like, you know, currently in high school, uh, currently doing AP or IB art, or wanting to apply to art school, uh, to take a look at someone else who's, you know, made a lot of art in high school and, um, you know, I don't know what their journey is, <laughs> I guess. I didn't even end up going to art school, so I, <laughs> I don't know why I'm making this video. Okay, so just to preface this video, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my art history. Um, I started taking uh, after school art classes uh, starting around like middle school, I guess. So it was this after school program and I'd go there every single weekend and paint like you know two or three hours a week. A lot of these I did in the after school program. I want to acknowledge first that I was super, super privileged to be able to start these classes so soon, especially when I was that young, like in middle school, because those classes over the years have really accumulated and I've made like, I was like counting and it, it's like 60 or 70 something pieces of, of stuff on canvas. So I was really prolific as a child, I guess, because of it. And I just wanted to acknowledge that privilege before I dive further because um, it was a lot of time and a lot of money and even like, you know, parental support. If, if you're really passionate about something, you should definitely start early and see where it grows. So yeah, I'm gonna start out with some oil painting pieces like this one. So this one's a real life study. It's more recommended to start out when you're starting out with studies to replicate other people drawing the studies so that you can see how, you know, people um, translate what they see into an oil pe painting piece. And then once you kind of understand how people like, you know, observe and, and do their own studies, you can start doing your own. Um, that's usually a more helpful way, but you can also go straight to studies too. This one is like an actual study. This one, this one looks more fancy, but it is a uh, study of a study. So I copied it and um, I really liked their, you know, the, the way that they use the paint and then the lighting and shadows. So I got a lot out of this piece and now it's hanging in my mom's kitchen. <laughs> so that's nice. So this one back here that everyone sees is also a uh, study of a study. This is the first time I did a landscape piece. So I had to, um, yeah, I had to see how other people did it first, right? There's a lot of specific, yeah. Landscape pieces are just a headache to me. I, I like drawing faces. So yeah, that was really useful. This one was really nice and helpful. This one's hanging in my mom's living room. So that's fun. <laughs> We progress from these oil painting studies of still life, you can progress on to uh, faces. This one was a study of a study. So um, yeah, somebody else painted this and I, I copied it. This was like, I think my, my first um, oil painting face piece. But um, when you're turning in uh, art portfolios, it's best to turn in um, not these practice pieces, but um, like actual studies that you've done and like, um, photo references that you found like from like your an actual photo and not you know art references art studies these are solely just for practice so for an art portfolio you always got to show that you can draw like something really really detailed really really well so um, I have a couple of those um, here's here's my friend from uh, camp that I drew one day this was um, 2015 so I was in 2015 oh my god that's so long ago I think I was a junior, junior in high school. So this one is also one I did solely just for college apps. And everyone, <laughs> if, if you are to take any um, form of advice, it is, uh, yeah, have one piece that shows off your skill set and your technique. Oh, you can see a reflection of, oh my God, it's a camera within a camera, look at that. So this one, um, wow, they're all pretty reflective, huh? is um a more creative piece i guess okay try to like ignore all the reflection that's going on but um this piece was kind of the piece that i was like you know i am creative and i have a lot of creative thoughts so this one also reflective because we 
got the screen on it, is a, uh, so when you're doing portfolios, it's good to mix and match your technical skill with something that's more um, in innovative and creative. So I superimposed the girl with the cityscape to create hopefully a wanderlust feeling. So this is one of my first creative pieces that I've done. Um, if you want to know the ref, it's just Cara Delevingne. I had a phase where I was like really, really obsessed with Cara Delevingne. Just everywhere. Here, here she is again, this Cara Delevingne. Wow, look at her face. This is what I mean by angst. This is angst, teenage angst in a nutshell. Um, I like, you know, put maps everywhere. I think it was, okay, this is more teenage angst. But I think it was inspired by like some John Green novel. It was the one with like a lot of maps as like the uh, decor. Um, it was, I think it might have been Paper Towns. Oh, that's why I was so obsessed with Cara Delevingne. <gasps> Revelation, guys. I, as you can see, um, she's like happy but also conflicted and then you can like turn her around and stuff like that and it's like, oh, she's sad. Oh, now she's happy. Oh, she's sad. Now she's happy. So this one, I think it might have won something at some point. I used to really care back then if I like want anything, but at this point, you know, time just passes away and you just kind of forget and you realize that it doesn't matter. Awards don't matter. It's the piece that matters. So this one I did, um, I went to an AP school for freshman year and then um, sophomore year I transferred schools and the school is an IB school. And so what's good about IB is that they don't really emphasize as much quantity as they do quality. So a lot of research has to go into, um, wow, there is like charcoal all over this thing. This piece is inspired by an artist that I follow um, called Alexandria Levasseur or something like that. Alexandria, I'll put the name in the, somewhere here. It's big, taking up space, make my hands black. <laughs> so here is another one that I did on the back of my eighth grade science project is a girl cutting off flowers on her skin um, with a uh, box cutting knife. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm running out of words to use at this point. And I'm just stumbling over art pieces. Okay, so this piece is also one that I did um, that I think I turned into some art portfolios for, for college. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's Robin Williams and um, a bunch of hands that was really, really uh, tiring to, to paint because that, that's basically my mood when I was trying to paint this thing. Um, I did a series um, for, uh, this was I think junior, senior year of, of high school. I took a lot of photography of um, my classmates and um, it was actually kind of funny. We were in, I set up like a little um, photography space in the kiln room and I would like beckon people to come into the dark room so I can photograph their nude bodies. Um, it was all for the sake of art and a lot of my classmates <laughs> were very enthusiastic and helping me so that was good. I just was really inspired by, I think it was Jenny Saville. She really focused on uh, just like skin and bodies and like their texture and how like skin kind of folds and kind of has that really delicate texture to it and I was really entranced by it. So um, I ended up doing my own little series of, of bodies. Here's the other one. So this one's a male figure. Um, oh, this one's also done in oil. I really like this one. And then these I did in acrylic. So, oh, it's upside down. Um, so yeah, the, the focal point of this piece is right here. I personally struggle a lot with acrylic because it like dries up so quickly. All right, here. And then um, here's the last one that I have. This one's also a pretty successful one in my opinion. I think this one is me. I think this one is myself. That's my back. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, this one's also a pretty successful one. So this, um, I guess right now is a five piece piece. <laughs> is uh, one of my favorites, um, definitely. Uh, this thing's really, really heavy. So I'm just going to... <sighs> All right, so... <sighs> Wait, hold up, I need to catch my breath. <laughs> This is a piece that I made 
nearing the end of my high school career and I wanted it to be the accumulation, the, the, the king piece of all the pieces I've ever done. Uh, this is a very personal piece depicting a habit of mine that defines a particular emotion, anxiety. Describing this habit is my way to express my, how my anxiety feels and how I feel towards it. The flowers represent that I have a lot going on in my head and that I also find beauty in it. The surreal, seemingly moving image of me biting my nails creates the rush of confusion that envelops me when I am worried. <laughs> there is also fear shown in the grotesque positioning of facial features. So yeah, I guess. Wow, look at the big old jangle thing. Okay, so I wanted to end this video um, to kind of talk about, you know, I, I made a lot of art. Where am I now? Well, uh, as I said in the beginning of this video, I ended up not going to art school. I applied to Rhode Island School of Design and um, ended up getting in. And I was like, maybe I'll go to Rhode Island School of Design. Yeah, I ended up going to California. I ended up going to USC. I think what was happening at the time was my anxiety, my anxiety was paralyzing me. And I, even though I really, really liked art, the thought of committing my life and, you know, essentially like mm, permanently setting my life path to an art field was something that terrified me. Art is something that I did to kind of escape school and all of the stress that I had surrounding school and thinking about how, you know, my career and my school became what I used to escape school was also a really scary feeling to me. I ended up going to a school that gave me more choices, a liberal arts school, and um, was able to explore. And then from then I, I decided to pick up psychology. For me, at the time, I think I wasn't ready for that kind of commitment. So I decided to put it down. And I think it took me to a really good place because I did all of this traditional art um, in, in high school, but I never really picked up digital art until I got into college. And the reason why was because I was, you know, stuck in a dorm and I was kind of bored and I was like, I don't want to study. So um, I bought a tablet and I started playing around with Photoshop. I started, you know, getting into Voltron, getting into fandoms, drawing things for fun, drawing things for myself. I feel a lot more satisfied and a lot happier with my relationship with art um, now that I am drawing things, you know, just purely for myself, purely for my own enjoyment. And um, my growth can be seen through that as well. Yeah, I'm happy with um, how things turned out today. Remember how I said I was really, really into John Green? Well, <laughs> The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. And uh, here's Hazel Grace and the, uh, fuck, I forgot his name. What's his name again? Ansel Elgort. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Um, so yeah, this is, I don't even know why I drew this. Was this for something? Was this for school? Um, I shouldn't really laugh at my old work. Behind every piece like this, there are multitudes and multitudes and multitudes of pieces like this. Or even more embarrassing that I don't even want to show. Dan Howell. I still kind of am a fan of Dan and Phil, but they were my anthem. So I drew this when I was 10. <laughs> Yeah, looks like something a 10 year old would draw. Who would have known that between 10 and 17, it would turn from this to this. Um, I think that's pretty impressive. Um, I think if anyone, you know, looks back at time, in time and, and sees all the impressive things that they've done in 10 years, um, you would all be impressed. I think you should all give yourselves a pat on the back. And with that, I will end the video because it's getting way too long and also I need to clean this stuff up because it's just taking up so much space in this cramped apartment. I'm really terrible with uh, with, uh, with with endings so um, just make sure to uh, have a nice day. You don't even need to subscribe just have a nice day that's that's all but if subscribing makes you have a nicer day you know I totally totally support that. All right bye everyone.